going over RPG mechanics. I highly recommend watching my previous two tutorial videos, Inventory and Survival Mechanics. We will be further expanding on the same mechanics used in these videos, so I may say to do something that you may not understand fully if you haven't at least seen the inventory video. In our current scene, we have a player and a pre-built inventory UI. I won't be going over UI today, however, I plan to make a specific video for what I use in this video. It's difficult to understand the concepts for both the UI and the RPG systems without having one or the other, so we will be just using the one I provide for this video for now. For RPG mechanics, there are a few things that come to mind. Player stats such as strength, dexterity, charisma, etc. Also, maybe skills such as sneaking, persuasion, and investigation. One of the most common applications for these stats is to change how the player receives damage and deals damage. For example, if the player has a higher dexterity, they may have resistance to certain damages. Or maybe the player can deal more damage if they have a higher strength. In order to do this, first, let's get our stats planned out. In our demo scene, I want to use strength and dexterity. Go ahead and make a motherboard with those two variables written out with the first letters capitalized. For me, I'm going a bit off D&D, so I'm setting the minimum value to 0 with the maximum set to 30, and the default to 10. When playing games like D&D, or probably behind the scenes in most games, stats have a modifier value that somehow changes damage, usually in combat. The best way to fully utilize this is to implement this modifier value so we can access it at any time. For this, go ahead and make a microchip next to one of your stat variables, as we want logic pertaining to stats to be close to each other so it's easier to find. This is where we will make a stat modifier value. If you know maths well, you can do this on your own, but in my case I will be teaching how D&D stat modifiers work. The gadgets we will need are a node input, a calculator, and a wireless transmitter. First, plug the input node into the A port of the calculator. In D&D, we add 1 to every two values above 10, and then under 10 at 9, we subtract 1, and then 1 again for every two levels. So, since we will be going every two levels, we will divide the stat number by 2 to find out how many sets of 2 we have. Set the calculator to divide, and the B slider to 2. Since the default level is 10, we want to subtract 10 divided by 2 from whatever value we get from our sets of 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5, so go ahead and grab another calculator, and plug the first calculator's output to the A input of the second calculator. Since we are subtracting, set the calculator to subtract and then the B slider to 5. Now we have a stat modifier value that we can transmit. However, it still doesn't fit exactly what we want as it isn't a whole number. We can use a calculator to round, however since we are applying the negative 1 value at 9 instead of 8, we have to do a bit of a change. Instead of regular rounding, we will do rounding down as this will make the values flip over properly. We are going to be putting this calculator between the two existing calculators, so we round before subtracting the base value. Now we can name the wireless transmitter SM for stat modifier, then underscore capital STR for strength. Then copy the microchip for dexterity, and copy and change the transmitter name for dexterity, which would be DEX for dex, or dexterity. Now that we have the stats system set up, let's move on to the advanced inventory system. On your motherboard, make three item variables. These variables are how many of this item you have in your inventory. In our demo scene, we have a sword, war axe, and an apple. So we will have three variables, starting with I underscore, then each first word capitalized. Sword with a capital S, War Axe with a capital W and a capital A, and then Apple with a capital A. Now that we have the variables in place, let's go over a bit of different pickup system than before. 
While working on making this tutorial, I found a certain way to do things is the most efficient. We will have two different versions of an item. One that will be equipped to the player, and one that will be picked up by the player. Let's make the pickup item first. Go ahead and make a copy of the sword model in the demo scene I have placed already. If you can't see it, turn off preview invisibility, and it should be in the middle of the area. Place a microchip onto the hilt of the sword. We are going to make two different methods for this item to be detected. Firstly, make a tag named item. Then, have another tag named item follow, with the I capitalized as well as the F capitalized. We are making a separate tag so we can have a different way to display the name and pick up icon for the item. We will get to that later. For this display system, we don't want the display to move between multiple items, so we are going to use an exclusive gate. The exclusive gate will allow only one item to be able to be picked up at a time. Go ahead and call the exclusive gate item pickup. The default settings for the exclusive gate is fine. For the other pickup method, get a node and label the group of the sword to object. Then use the detected output to plug into the node. Plug the item tag's detected output and the node's output into the exclusive gate's input. Then, using the gate's active output, power the item follow tag. This makes it so if the item is detected, our pickup text displayer will only follow the active one at a time. Next up, we have a little bit more game concept idea to go over before we continue building this pickup. In a lot of our logic systems, we want to know exactly which item we are dealing with, and a lot of the time, we don't really have a specific way to find this out. What we are going to do is assign each item a number, or otherwise known as an ID. Each ID will allow us to check if we are using that specific item. The way I like to set this value is with a switch, by setting its on value for the switch. In this scene specifically, the IDs for the sword, Warax, and Apple are 2, 2.5, and 10. Once you have placed this switch, we are going to make a wireless transmitter to tell what the item is. Name the wireless transmitter item. Go ahead and plug the switch output into the input of the wireless transmitter. We only want to get the value of whatever we are looking at, so plug the active output of the gate into the power of the transmitter. We are also going to use this transmitter to get the pickup input, so we will actively use it to pick up the item by increasing the item's value with a variable modifier, then destroying the pickup with a destroyer. Now we have a microchip that we can retool for any item pickup. Go ahead and make copies of the other two items and set them up. Again, the ID for the Warax is 2.5 and for the Apple it is 10. Next, let's actually make the pickup logic. Make an invisible, non-collidable cube and put a microchip on it. On this chip, we are going to have three main sets of logic. First, let's do the easiest. To make this look as professional as possible, we want to display the text the same way no matter what. The best way to do this is to make the cube look at the camera. To do this, we need a global settings gadget, a splitter, and a look at rotator. On the second page of the global settings gadget, use the camera transport output to plug into the splitter. Then using the target position input on the third page of the look at rotator, plug in the position output of the splitter. Then change the settings of the look at rotator so it stays upright, and set the strength, dampening, and speed to the max. Make sure the rotator gizmo is set up correctly with the arrow pointed forwards and the ball end pointing up. For the next part, let's get the detection logic on the player set up. On the player, in this demo, go ahead and scope into them, then the model, then open the microchip on the top box. If you don't see this, make sure preview invisibility is turned off. Then open the Neon RPG add-ons microchip, then the item collection microchip. Here I have two pre-placed trigger zones that detect the items. You can see what their settings are, but they are pre-placed to make this process easier. 
If you are doing this on your own, remember how we set the item pickup. Then place a wireless transmitter and name it detected item. Go ahead and plug in both of the detected outputs of the trigger zones into the wireless transmitter. Now let's get back to the item displayer. The new microchip for the next section of the logic is for following the item. Go ahead and name it if you'd like. In here, we need a wireless receiver, a teleporter, and a NOT gate. Hook up the wireless receiver output to the NOT gate and make sure the receiver is set to receive globally. Then hook up the NOT gate to the teleporter, copy the teleporter, and power that one with the wireless receiver. So for the one powered by the NOT gate, set it to teleport to the player tag. If a player doesn't have a player tag, add one. For the one powered by the wireless receiver directly, have it teleport to the item follow tag. That's the following microchip done. Now make another microchip for actually displaying the pickup text. In this microchip, we need a controller sensor set to receive signals wirelessly. We use this to transmit to the item that it has been picked up with a wireless receiver set to receive item. We need to choose a button that will be used to pick up the item. I'm using triangle. Since we only want to pick up the item we are looking at first, get a signal manipulator and set it to pulse at on mode. This prevents multiple items from being picked up with a single button press. Plug the triangle output of the controller sensor into the signal manipulator, then the signal manipulator into the input of the wireless receiver. For the rest of this, we can plug the output of the receiver to a text displayer for the pickup icon, which for me is triangle, and set it to in scene and always on top. Then we need to copy this for each and every item and format it with the item name and make the spacing correct in the scene. Then we need a calculator for each item. Remember the IDs we set earlier? 2, 2.5, and 10. 2 for the sword, 2.5 for the war axe, and 10 for the apple. Using this setup, set up the equal mode for each calculator for each item with the ID being the value of the B slider and the mode of the calculator is set to equals. Then for each calculator's A input, plug in the wireless receiver output. With this, we have the item pickup system complete. You can now make items for the ones included in the demo, and you can actually see them in the inventory you can open with the touchpad. For the last thing to do, let's actually make the logic for the weapons. I have included separate objects that you can find in the cave that are pre-worked into the UI system. Pull these two out of the cave, and let's start with the sword. Remember how we made the stat modifier system? This is where we implement it, but first, let's set up how it actually equips. With this system, it's pretty easy. Just place a teleporter, turn on its orientation option, and set it to teleport either in the right or left hand. You'll want to make sure that the gizmo on the teleporter has Z facing the front of the sword, Y is going up, and X is on the side of the sword. Now go ahead and grab two wireless receivers, a calculator, and a health modifier. The first wireless receiver is for a stat modifier. In this case I'm using dex, or dexterity. Plug this into the A input of the calculator. This is our actual damage we are going to apply. Set the B slider to what you want the base damage to be. If you want the modifier's amount to be higher than 1 or 2, set the input mode of A to multiply to increase the value per stat bonus, and set the base value to multiply by in the A slider. Now in the health modifier, set it to damage what you want on the labels page. I tend to set it to damage foes and targets, with the mode set to have all labels. For the modification amount, set it to negative 1. Then plug the calculator's output into the modification input. Then using L1 and X, set the modification input nub to modulate mode. It's an X. This will allow the modifier's damage amount to change based on the player's stats. The next wireless receiver is actually optional. Set it to receive damage frames globally. This will allow animations to tell every weapon when to damage. You can do this simply by putting a damage frames transmitter on the animation's timeline. I'd recommend setting the health modifier's type to zone as it would be much easier to actually hit something this way. 
And now, you have a weapon you can equip with the UI. This is all I have for this video, however in the next videos, we will be going over how to make the UI. In this video, I will also go over skill unlocks that increase your stats. It is a bit complicated, however, so I'm planning on having an easier UI sometime later on. I also have planned NPCs, experience points, and leveling, and more. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.